Hello and welcome to the United Community Channel and we're back with another match preview and it's previewing Manchester United vs Spurs in the Premier League midweek fixture this week uh, and it game maybe game two of a tough week for Manchester United obviously the result on the weekend against Newcastle wasn't ideal we, you know we came away with a, a nil all draw boring enough game chances created but chances not taken is the main point that we take out of it so we have plenty to get into in relation to Manchester United's upcoming fixture uh, we're going to discuss maybe options I'm going to give you my starting 11 at the end and then I'm going to also give you my score prediction uh, but we're going to start off with point number one and point number one is Christian Eriksen has to start now obviously we know how much Christian Eriksen means to this Manchester United team and how instrumental he is within that midfield. And I think it was very clear to see on Sunday against Newcastle when he was out, how much we did miss him. Obviously, Fred had a very, very, very poor game. Uh, and of course, Scott McTominay was suspended. He had a one-game suspension due to five yellow cards. So, you know, obviously we do know Christian Eriksen missed the game due to illness. Again, we're still waiting here. Obviously, Ten Hag has a late interview today. Uh, so maybe by the time this is out or by the time you're watching it, we will know more. Uh, but as of now, we don't know whether Christian Eriksen is going to be available or not. Reports have suggested there will be late fitness tests on him and Anthony Martial, who we'll get into a little bit later as well. Uh, but I think Christian Eriksen... I think what's kind of surprised me is how heavily reliant we are on Christian Eriksen I didn't really expect us to be that way so much this season uh, but we are I think we can see even more so now obviously before we knew the likes of Fred and McTominay weren't good enough uh, for Manchester United in terms of the midfield but I think now that we've seen the levels that a midfielder should be playing at with the likes of Christian Eriksen with the likes of Casemiro coming in I think it just goes to show the gulf in in quality between the players, you know. So I think if he is fit, if he is past fit, if he is able to play, I think he has to start. I really, really do. Uh, and I think we're a better team with him. I think we play in the front foot more. We can control the game better. He, You know, he gets his foot on the ball. His passing range is a lot better as well. Uh, and he creates more chances for our forward players. Now, of course, we do know that, you know, we haven't been short on chances over the last couple of games. I think 48 shots in total in the last two games and one goal scored. Uh, but I certainly do think that uh, we're a better team with Christian Eriksen there, so I think uh, he has to start. The next big debate for Eric Ten Hag in relation to, I suppose, team selection is, who does he go with up front? Is he going with Martial or is he going with Cristiano Ronaldo? Now, I think I would be happy with either player. I, again, it, it seems to be a recurring theme with Martial, obviously, this year, that he comes back, he plays more than likely not a full game uh, and he's injured again now I don't think this is as big of a reoccurrence in relation to rushing him back into games because you know obviously Ten Hag has said previously in his interviews that we don't want to rush Martial back we want to let him get back get the full fitness and then play him and he has allowed him to do that and a lot of people I have seen have suggested that he's rushed Martial back to play in this team before he's been fully fit. Now, I would suggest otherwise to that. And the reason for that is the fact that Martial's last three injuries have all been different injuries. He's had different injuries to different parts of his body. So I think Eric Ten Hag, if you individualise these injuries, he has allowed him to fully recover from these injuries. He's just got new injuries, you know. So uh, I do think that Martial fits into Ten Hag's system more so than Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo hasn't had it easy this year. He has had chances and he hasn't taken them. Uh, is it one goal so far, maybe two goals so far this season, I think, uh, in all competitions? So certainly not having the best time of it. Again, I don't think we've helped him an awful lot, you know, especially with our wingers and our wide play. We do have... And we tend to play inverted wingers, which is pretty much the norm with a lot of the top teams throughout Europe. Uh, that you play a left-footed player on the right-hand side and a right-foot player on the left-hand side. But I think an argument in switching that back across is when Cristiano Ronaldo is playing up front, you have one of the best headers of, you know, of the football basically in the world. And obviously we've seen what happened 
in the last few minutes against Newcastle on Sunday when Rashford missed that guilt edge opportunity to score with his head. I think if that falls to Cristiano Ronaldo, I think you, you win the game. Uh, and I think it was quite weird given the fact that when Ronaldo was substituted off, our, our wingers switched and we had a left wing, a left footer on the on the left hand side, and a, and a right footer on the right hand side, putting crosses into the box. When you take off, probably you know one of the best headers in the world. So uh, I do think that there's an argument there for Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, but look, I, I, obviously he wasn't happy coming off, and that's not nice to see. It never is. You know, I don't like players shaking. Obviously, I don't want players to be happy coming off the field, but I certainly don't want them to be petulant either. You know, he'd done it with Ralph Rangnick last year and he's done it again now with Eric Ten Hag. And I don't think it sets a good precedent for maybe younger players within the squad. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would be happy with either. But um, obviously, we'll let you know in the match reaction. or We'll let you know during uh, my predicted 11 uh, in a few moments who I'm going to go with. Another area of, I suppose, dispute for Eric Ten Hag in relation to his starting eleven is our wide areas. And does he go with Marcus Rashford or does he go with Jadon Sancho on the left wing? Uh, I do think that if Martial is fit uh, and ready to play and if Eric Ten Hag goes with him, obviously he's going to be playing through the centre. So I don't see a scenario where Marcus Rashford is playing as a number nine uh, against Spurs on Wednesday night. It it may happen. I I, I would be surprised if it did. So I think it, it's a straight shootout between Sancho and Rashford for that starting place on the left-hand side. I think Sancho played well uh, in the last couple of games. Obviously, he came on last Thursday night uh, in the Europa League uh, and he started against Newcastle. And he looked bright against Newcastle, I have to say. Uh, but he's not got to them heights that he that obviously that we expected him to get to uh, on the back of his performances in the Bundesliga and basically them performances are what got him to move to Manchester United so I still think he does have a long way to go he needs to put a run of consistent games together you know of, of quality performances Marcus Rashford has been okay this season he's again he's been kind of what we expect from Marcus Rashford when he's good he's good he gets goals uh, and he has a couple of assists as well but when he's poor he's very poor uh, so it's going to be interesting to see who Eric Ten Hag goes with there is a case for both players to start uh, against the Spurs I probably would be and, and, and we get into Spurs as well uh, but I think given the fact that Spurs and Antonio Conte this season tend to play they tend to play a counter-attacking game. They sit in, uh, they soak up opposition and, and they hit on the counter-attack. That's not really Marcus Rashford's game, playing against the low block. He likes teams to play high up the field with loads of space in behind for a ball over the top with his pace. So for that reason, I think probably Sancho may get the nod. Um, but we, we, we'll have to see on Wednesday night. Now, when talking about the opposition in relation to Spurs, obviously there is two main threats when it comes to Spurs, and that is Harry Kane and Hyun Min Son. And to a lesser extent, Kulisevsky, who I think has been absolutely phenomenal for uh, Spurs since he's come in. Uh, you know, I think he's he's reinvigorated, uh, I suppose, their, their attacking lineup. Obviously... They weren't short on quality with Kane and Son there. But obviously Kane and Son are going to be the two main threats. Uh, and it's something that Manchester United will have to nullify. Again, going back to saying, you know, I suppose the style of play that, that Antonio Conte has been playing with Spurs this year. They've been playing, in my opinion, a lot of games on the counter-attack. Soaking up opposition threats, hitting them on the counter-attack with the pace of, you know, Son... Kulisevsky, Richarlison at points there as well, uh, and uh, Harry Kane as well. Now, there is reports suggesting that Richarlison and Kulisevsky are going to be injured for this game and are not going to make it, which again is, uh, you know, is a positive for Manchester United. Uh, but it's certainly a team we can't be taken for granted uh, with the quality that they have. But I think in defence, I think that's where Spurs, I suppose, are most weaker. Yeah, are are at their weakest um, because you know you're playing Eric Dyer uh, at centre back I, I just don't know how good he is you know obviously Spurs are where they are in the table and they're above us in the table so Antonio Conte has been doing uh, a decent job with, with you know what he has uh, 
Uh, but I certainly do think, given the qualities that Manchester United do have going forward, I certainly do think that we can get at this Spurs defence. Uh, and I certainly do think we can, you know, I was going to say score goals, but we haven't done that in the last few games. I certainly think we can create chances against them. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how Manchester United cope with a low block if Spurs do go, uh, you know, the way they've been going an awful lot this season, you know, with a low block sitting in. Uh, because Manchester United's problem, not just this season, I think we've improved on it this season, but more so last season and the season before, is our failure to create chances when a team plays a low block and sits in and just defends. So it's going to be interesting to see how Manchester United um, get on against that. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, this is the starting 11 that I would go with. Uh, again, it's it's uh, it's not really a predicted 11, uh, more so than what, what I would go with myself. Uh, obviously, David De Gea in goal, I don't see any reason to change. You know, big game, he's going to be play the majority of games this season. Back four stays the same for me. Uh, Delo and Luke Shaw. Obviously, Luke Shaw's come in and he's taken his chance over the last couple of games. And I don't think it's, I've said it before, I don't think it's any harm for uh, Malassia to actually, you know, spend a few games on the bench, uh, have a look, see how he's getting on. I, I have no doubt he's going to be, you know, a top player for us in the future. But he's still young and he's early into his career. So Delo and, and Shaw as our fullbacks. And then obviously Varane and Martinez, uh, as our centre back partnership again, you know when both are fit, both have to start. Uh, I think Varane brings a calmness to the defence, and you can see over the few games that he did miss how much we missed him in the defence. Uh, and you know, I think we we you know we seen against Newcastle on the weekend another clean sheet. Uh, obviously, he could have easily given away a penalty, uh, but I just think him and Martinez together bring that calmness to the back. They're comfortable on the ball. They're able to play out and they're able to defend first and foremost, which is very good. Uh, central midfield then, obviously, the, the three in central midfield, I think, is a no-brainer now at this stage. It's Casemiro, Eriksen and Bruno. Now, I'm going with, with Eriksen in the midfield on the basis that he is going to be available to play. I don't see any other reason why you would pick anyone else when they, when those three are available. Casemiro has really cemented his place over the last you know, week or two in the game time he's gotten there. Uh, and I think given how good of a defensive midfielder Casemiro is, it allows us to have two more attacking players playing alongside him who don't potentially have to be tracking back all of the time. Uh, and I think... You know, that allows the likes of Bruno and Christian Eriksen to get on the ball, you know, and to advance the ball up the field and create chances for our team. So with that uh, and then our three forward players, I would go with uh, Anthony on the right. I think he's, you know, his, the start of his Manchester United career has been very impressive. So I'm going to go with him. Uh, I'm going to go with Rashford on the left hand side. I think he is playing slightly better than Sancho at the moment. Uh, I think Sancho has been hot and cold, as Rashford has, in fairness. So that is really a toss of a kind. Uh, but I think Marcus Rashford has a good record against Spurs and he likes playing against them. So for that reason, I'll go with him. And I'm going to go with Anthony Martial up front. Again, this could go either way, depending on Martial's fitness. And of course, I would have no problem with Cristiano Ronaldo playing there. reason I would go with Anthony Martial up front is that I just think he, he suits Eric Ten Hag's system uh, a bit more. He drops out into that uh, maybe number 10 role, uh, holds the ball up and allows runners to go in behind. Uh, and I think for that reason, I think it would be probably the better... I suppose, way to play against a Spurs team like this because if Spurs are going to sit in and sit in and sit in and you leave a number nine in on him, they'll be happy to do that and mark him. Whereas Martial will drop out. He may pull defenders with him and create spaces in behind. Uh, so for that reason, I would go with Martial. Uh, and then in relation to a score prediction, I do think Manchester United are going to have enough to beat Spurs. Uh, and I'm going to go with a 2-1 victory to Manchester United. Uh, again, like I said, I think this Spurs defence can be got at. And I think if we take our chances, we'll score goals. But that's the important part here. Can we take our chances? Because we've been creating them. We just haven't been taking them. Uh, and I do think with Spurs, uh, quality that they do have going forward, obviously with Kane and Son being the main two, I do think they have a goal in them. So for that reason, I will go with, with Spurs to get a goal. But I do think Manchester United have uh, what it takes to uh, to get the victory. Um 
but yeah look that's the match review guys I appreciate everyone for watching uh, let me know your thoughts and comments uh, uh, sorry let me know your thoughts in the comment section below uh, do you agree with my starting 11 uh, would you change anything and let me know your score prediction in the comments below we're going to be doing a live watch along for the game tomorrow night we're going to be live from 7.45 both on YouTube and on TikTok so I hope you can join the watch along uh, and make sure you smash a like on the video and hit subscribe if you're new but until tomorrow night take care